Welcome everyone to um, lesson two of uh, our Gangs of Java class. For those of you who don't know, this is a is part of affiliation of Junior Coding League. My name is Anish, and I'm a senior at I'm an incoming senior at Westminster Windsor Plainsville High School North. And today we're going over um, like, uh, we're going over types and variables. Uh, for those of you that are new today, uh, we ask that you know we highly recommend that you check out our first video on our introduction to, to um. To Java because like most of like this because this is a series and most of this information may be confusing, but if you if you have job, prior Java experience that's okay you, we welcome you to uh, join us in this video. So without further ado let's get started. So today we're going to go over types and variables. So let's first talk about like memory locations. So basically where like every like every um like piece in like in Java, it's like stored in, like every piece of data is stored in like an address. And they, all this, it's with this information, it's stored in these things called memory locations. So for example, this number three, which we can take in as a piece of data, it's stored in this um, address of like, we can, we can call it a 1000. Now, we probably don't know what address it's stored in. It, it probably won't matter to us what address it's stored in, but in this case, let's we'll just say it's stored in address, in address 1000. And we also have this other piece of information. Let's call it, let's, let's say we're storing this number six and we're storing that in address 1004. So in that case, like we have a, we have two memory locations. We don't, again, we don't know like if these are the actual memory locations, these are just examples. So now let's talk about like what these memory locations are very useful. So basically like these are, and we, uh, these memory locations, we're, op we're operating on them. We're gonna, and we're gonna give them names. So for example, let's call this, um, this, uh, this thing we said right here, address 1000, let's call it mem1000, which is apparently equal to three. And then well, we also have mem1004, which in this case, what it's doing is, we're storing this, this address 1000, we're taking that value, and in this case, it's three, and we're, we're taking that and we're adding three to it, and what that does is it creates the value six, which is stored in this new memory address of, uh, six, uh, of address 1004. And what these, and of course, like we don't want to keep calling them, you know, like, you know, mem like memory location 1000 or address 1000. We want to give them names because we won't know what memory location these, uh, if these pieces of information are stored. In. So we can probably give, um, you know, this address 1000 of the name of A. Yeah. And we can probably give this uh, this um, address 1004 the name B. And what these two things, A and B, here there are variables, which are basically like a name given to these memory locations. So, but before we go on to like talk about like what variables are, it's important that we know what types are. So let's move this back. So types, what is a type? A type is like, it basically what it does, it restricts like the possible values that memory location may contain. So why would we care about if it restricts or not? Well, let's find out. So basically, all but before we talk about that, all variables must be given a type, no matter what. Okay. So here we have um, an, in, an int a equals one. What int stands for? It's an integer. And a, that's our, our variable name. Well, let's, we'll, we'll talk about that later. And it's given the value of one. So apparently we have this, this value that's stored in an address. And we call that, we don't know what address it's in, but we know that that address is like the A, this variable name A, it's referencing this address. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's at the value of one, it's in like one's a piece of information that's stored in this address. And, obviously, and you probably can tell what int means, int means integer. And so int are type here, and it's restricting the possible values in this memory location to only be integers. Now let's look at this next statement. So we have int B equals 1.1. Now, does that, does, does, does that sound right? It does not, because obviously we said a type restricts the possible values in memory location can contain. And we said that B is an integer. And we're, in this case, we're saying it's um, equal to 1.1, which is obviously not true. And, or not possible, actually, because it's 1.1 is obviously not an integer, so it'll give us an error. So now let's start talking about the types of types. So first, let's talk about primitive types. So basically, variables are holding all these data, and in primitive types, they're they're holding um the like integers, decimal numbers, characters, and true or false. 
Now, types can also uphold other kinds of data, but in Java, these in Java build they're built in primitive types are built into uh, into like into Java. So there are four categories that fall under primitive types: they're integer types, floating point types, char type, and the Boolean type. So now let's talk about each of those. So first, there's integer types. Now there's um, there's multiple integer types that range like now like one we got we got to go back to like the original function of a type. It restricts the like the, the, the values that can like be stored into a variable. Now, the one one thing that's like really important to know here is we like there's multiple integer types, and the reason why there there might be multiple like why can't there we might be asking why can't there only be one that like stores like you know all this like like the, in, in, like infinite values. But thing is like in these types they have to like like the, the benefit of like having these different types is that their storage is actually less so for example let's go into this first one the first one we have is called a byte now the smallest value for a byte is negative 128 the largest value for a byte is 127 so in a byte we can hold we can hold um, data that contains a value between negative 128 and 127 and the key here is that the byte only holds eight bits or one byte so that's pretty cool and let's move on to the next one it's called a short. Now, a short, its smallest value is negative 32,768. And its largest value, 32,767. But unfortunately, what makes a short, like, you know, like, you know, uh, what like, it makes a short, like, different than a byte, and, like, that's not in a good way, is that it requires more storage. Now, we may not care about storage, in, but, like, when you guys do, like, algorithmic programming or competitive programming, you might storage might be really important in those there so it's important that we know all these types now let's move on to int as we, as we saw before int like it basically it like sounds like integer and, but it's not the only integer type there's four integer types actually so the smallest value for an integer is negative 2 to the power of 30 of 31 which is like some big like number which man, we couldn't write it out and the largest value is 2 to the power of 31 minus 1 now with int, we, we may use it more commonly than others, and it will hold 32 bits. And the final one is long. And the, the smallest value for long is negative 2 to the, to the power of 63, and the largest value for long is 2 to the power of 63 minus 1. The storage it contains is 64 bits. Now let's move on to floating point types. So there's actually there's two floating point types. And again, like what makes them different is their uh, storage. And but like, and in integers, we they, like what's different about like integers is um, like their largest and smallest value. That's like one thing that benefits like those integer types. And in this case, what float? So we have two types. We have the float type. It uses 32 bits and it expresses a decimal number in single precision. But then there's also the double type. It uses 64 bits. But what makes it different is that it actually has more precision. Well, it, and that can be like different for like whatever scenario you might be using a flow or double. You may care about precision, you may not care about precision, but in this case, let's, let, let, let we know that we want, we want to use a flow if we want like things to be rounded in this case. Let's look at this example, actually. So we have 3.14159265585. So for those of you that may know, Matt, you may know that some like the few first few uh, numbers of pi and what this and a float what this does is it actually rounds it to like the nearest um and in this case it's, it's like not not as precise as a double as you can see the double is at adding more um, more numbers to the end so in that in in certain scenarios I mean, you may want to use a flow if you like care about storage but in this case like as you can see you can tell the difference between a flow and a double now let's move on to the char type so a char type is, so like char is, is like, you know, could be short for character. So the char type, it uses 60 bits to express Unicode text characters. Now, what is a Unicode text character? So like Unicode means to like encode characters as whole numbers. So let's look at, let's look at, actually look at um, the, this, uh, like how these, these whole numbers are like turned into characters. So let's open, let's go to this link right here. I'll actually open up, open up for you guys. 
So here we have an ASCII table, and it's by um, Carnegie Mellon University, uh, one of the top computer science schools. And as you can see, yeah, you, there's all these like charts, A, B, C, and D. They're represented by a decimal, 65, 66, 67. And what those are doing, it's, those are like, those are basically representations of these, of these char values. So if you guys want to open, you guys can actually just look up ASCII, value, ASCII table on Google. You don't have to open up this, uh, this same one. And if you want, you can open up your own. It will come in handy for the exercises we are going to do later. But again, like this, this comes in like handy when like, and like, and some, uh, in like some programming where you'll have to like, you know, modify chars in some in scenarios. And therefore, like, it's good to like, good like to like keep this ASCII table handy. You don't have to memorize this ASCII table, but like, you know, the more experience you have, you'll eventually get used to using this ASCII table. Anyway, let's uh, move on. And it's one more key thing to know. You may want to note that the range between for capital letters is 65A, and it goes all the way to 90 for C, and 97 for A for lowercase a and 122 for lowercase c z you may want to keep that in mind so let's move on to the boolean type the boolean type it's very simple the boolean, it has only two possible values true and false so as we can see here we have two variables one is called t one is called f and we set this t it has a boolean type and it, we set equal to true and we have a boolean f and we set equal to false now let's talk about string. Now remember, strings are not a primitive type. We looked at the, we looked at the previous definition of primitive types. It holds only true, false, decimal numbers, integers, and characters. But strings, like strings, are not primitive types. They are objects of a certain class that's called string. So uh, what do strings actually do? They hold multiple characters together, just like they, just like as the word implies. So let's look at something like here. I'm saying string name is equal to Anish. And remember that you want to use double quotes for strings. And remember, name is a, a string. It, we could say it, we could say string is a type, but it's not a primitive type. It's remember, it's really important to keep that in mind. So now let's do some exercises based off what we learned about types. So we have some. Let's spend like five minutes answering these questions. And we'll go over it once we're done. But once you're done, sorry. And for those of you that finish early, I really encourage you guys to check over your work because it's like really easy to make mistakes here.
we'll go over this in one more minute. Please uh, check your work. I really encourage that. All right, let's go over this. So for the first one, we said, which parameter test can express the number 1,000? And if you answered short and, and long, then you are correct. Because and I'm pretty sure if you, do, if you did not remember the ranges for them, the, for the four um, integer types, then that's, that's okay. I mean, like you, don't have to, you don't have to remember them, but it's just for practice. Let's just know that it's short and long because a byte holds between negative 128 and 127. Now let's go over which perimeter tips can express the number 100. Now, as we said before, um, a byte can hold between negative 128 and 127, so it's a short and, and long, as well as a byte. Now, which perimeter tips can express the number 48.124? So precision is not really important here, but it's so therefore, both floating types can um, express the number 48.124, so it will be a float and a double. Now, what integer value expresses the char primitive uh, j? lowercase j. If you answer 74, then unfortunately you are wrong. So let's take a look at our ASCII table. As you, if you, you, if you, you may have gotten confused, but remember that characters are really case sensitive here. So uh, in this case, it would actually be 106 for lowercase j. So the answer is 106. Now the last question is asking which primitive type expresses the following, my name is John. So if you answer a string, then unfortunately you are wrong because I asked which primitive type expresses the following, my name is John. And it's really important to remember a string is not a primitive type. A string is involved in its own class. So therefore, no, no primitive type expresses the following, my name is John. You could use a bunch of characters to like create this my name is John thing, but it doesn't, but like my name is John does not ex is not expressed by a primitive type. So let's move on. Now, we'll, now that we know about types, let's talk about variables. So let's talk about declaring initializing variables. I'm pretty sure you guys have gotten good context about what variable is, but just to, just to like refresh, a variable is a name of a memory location, as we said before. So this is the format for declaring and initializing variables. We have a type, then we have the variable name, and then we have the variable val variables value, or what value is stored in that, that address. Now remember, we don't know what address these um, Variable, variables are being stored in two, we're giving them a name. So let's look at like, some examples about of like some variables that are declared and what, which variables are initialized. And one more thing, declaring variables is saying, is expressing the, name, the type and the name. And initializing the variable is giving it a value. So let's look at some examples. So here we have byte num equals one. So obviously one fits in that range of byte and it's storing a small, and, and has a small storage space, and we said byte, and we call this variable num for number is equal to one. And then, like here, we have another one in count equals four. So let's say we were counting something. We have an integer, we have a count, and we set that equal to four. And now we have a float. Now we said float f equals one point one f. Now you may ask, well, now that f was not a typo. So what this f is actually doing? It's some. Um, it's because like when we, when we say like float f equals 1.1, unfortunately, like it's actually interpreting it as a double. So if we want that precision to be there and like to have that less store space, we actually have to add this f at the end to, to say that it's a float. So in this case, we're saying float f equals 1.1. Now you could 1.1f. Now you could say that it's equal. You could say we could do float f, f equals 1.1 and you could not add the f and it will still compile. But in this case, like we want to make sure that the float f provides a like, like provides the, the the storage of that we want and now let's move on to this one 
double F2. So we're saying double F2 is equal to 1.1, and that, that's pretty straightforward. There's no need to um, add anything to that. And the last one is string name equals my, Anish, my name. So these are all examples of declaring initializing variables. So now let's talk about using variables. So we actually have this program right here. Public class print var, public static void meaning. And as you can see, we have some. So take a moment to look at this program and pr predict what the output might be. So I'll give you one minute to like look it over. Okay, so I'm pretty sure. So if you haven't like, let's actually run this program right now. So I typed it up and that, no, the output was actually actually there. But we have six, one, two, and three for the second line. One, and followed by, we're printing the variable values. One, two, and three. So let's look at, let's look at each of these. So each, let's, let's look at this program right from the beginning. So we're creating a class and we have our main method. And we are, we're declaring this first one in A equals 1, in B equals 2, in C equals 3. And this first um, system that has a print link, we have them. Um, we're saying that well, we're, add, we're actually adding um, the three values in, within these parentheses, 1 plus 2 plus 3. And that's why it's printing 6. Now for this one, um, it's a little different. because it, Even though we're having, we have these spaces in between, it, that actually turns like as we mentioned in our first lesson, this actually like turns uh what we're trying to print into a string. So each of these values when we keep adding, so we have one plus a space plus two plus a space plus three, and that gives us the result one two three. And then the final thing is printing out the, oh, I'm sorry, printing out the like the, var the variable values. So we have in a equals one, in b equals two, and in c equals three. So that gives us one, two, and three. So it's, it seems pretty straightforward, it is. So now let's, let's move on to a simple exercise. So using what we learned from that previous example, let's try this. Declare a variable that contains the string hello, declare another variable that contains the string goodbye, and create a class called greeting that contains the two variables and prints each variable on a separate line. So that should be pretty straightforward. We'll, we'll get, give you a few minutes to, to do it and we'll go over it. Okay, so I'm assuming you're done now. It should have been very straightforward. Let's go over it. So let's create a new 
class. We're going to call it meeting. First one, one, reading, and we'll say that's equal to no. that one, goodbye, I'll say that's equal to goodbye. Oh, I'm sorry, it's supposed to be a string, not an integer. Print both of them. Let's run this. Yep, so we can see hello and goodbye. So that was pretty straightforward, but now let's go on to another lesson, another um, exercise that's a bit more challenging, but it like it, it's very good for like, you know, practicing the usage of variables. So our next exercise is you started renting out your house. In your first month, you earned $1,072.50 rent. You also had to pay the house expenses as part of the contract. You had to pay $112.50 on electricity, $20.75 on water, and $150.20 on um, surprise and house repairs. Write a class called rent, whose main method includes variables for your earnings and your expenses. Document those expenses and, co and costs cost to calculate your profit in the first month. So this might take a while, but I'll give you uh, five minutes to like, go over to like practice this. And we'll go over it after that.
So we'll go over this in three more minutes. Okay, so let's go over this. If you found this tricky, no worries. It was one of the longer problems, but let's go over it now. So let's create a new class and we're gonna call it rent. Don't, and by the way, don't worry about like this, these comments in this package. That's only for um, my integrated development environment. You guys might have something different. So, so our first variable, we're going, it's going to be a double. And we're going to quickly set it to one of 7.5. And we could add a zero if we want, just because it's money. Now it's expenses. We have the electricity, which is 112. Double water, which is equal to 2075. Here's 50. 20. So let's. So now let's go over printing them. This. So first we're going to start by printing the rent amount, which was our income. So 
we're putting a tab here just because like we want to or orient this like table very nicely and we're putting this dollar sign because it comes like right after the tab and we're gonna add the rent so what this probably should do is print rent amount and then uh, a tab and then a dollar sign followed by the rent amount that we were paid then we will electricity which was And we will actually subtract our water bill because we're paying for it. And we're going to uh, repairs. repairs. And just like to make this nice, I'm probably just going to add, you know, one more. Line, and then we're going to finally calculate our profit. So there's two ways you can do this. So one way would, the way one way would be creating a new variable and then, like setting like that, like we can call that profit, and then like we can do the addition and subtraction there, or we can just like we can even do that in our um, print statement itself. So let's we'll, for, we'll actually do both of them. Let's. We have rent and we're subtracting the electricity we had to pay, the water we had to pay, and the repairs. Now it's really important we do these in um parent in uh, parentheses because this is actually its own um like uh, what number like we don't want any of that to concatenate into a string. So we'll run this. And yeah, there you have it. We got a profit of seven hundred and eighty-nine dollars and five cents. And now let's um, let's let's try uh making turning this into a variable because this what well, this lesson's about variables. So let's say we want to let's actually comment this out this line out. And let's say double profit is equal to rent minus electricity minus water minus repairs. And then um we're gonna make this statement instead of doing all that addition and subtraction in the variables we can actually even in the print statement we can actually just do we can just say the variable and it should print the same amount and it's the same result yep it worked so there you have it so if you found this hard don't worry it's I mean, if you're this problem you're probably new and as you practice you'll get along with it and so that that was this problem it was a longer problem so i gave you a little bit more time but that's how you do it. and i hope you like have like a good um, understanding of variables and types now so thanks for watching so please subscribe to our channel for notifications about the next lesson and if you would like more practice problems please email our, our junior coding league at gmail.com we have other videos and series as well we have python with data science and we have um, html for like web development and applications ultimately this java series will lead you into towards some algorithms and to prepare for like PP computer science and uh, USICO, or USICO, USA Computing Olympiad. So I hope you found this video helpful. But again, this is the beginnings of Java, so you may you may find you may find this easy. You may not find you may find this new, but uh, ultimately we're trying to accommodate everyone, and we hope that this help this help this video was a good intro was a good introduction to types and variables. So thanks for watching, and remember to please subscribe and like this video, and we'll see you next time.